Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is a video series three, part five. In this part, I would like to share with you some highlights on the relations between individuals and the states in the new states series. There are three basic principles in the new state theory I would like to share with you here. The first basic principle is that the human society serves the mankind. This principle looks very simple and trivial, but it is not respected today. In many cases, some social concept such as a family, organization, society, countries, but not the people are the center of the gravity of the society. Some people would argue that a society with social equality and justice is good for everyone. This is only a dream since the time of Plato. The problem is that all social concepts are governed by the social wills of the human society. You could never say what is absolutely right and what is absolutely wrong. It is why this kind of discussions has lasted a few thousand years and we still don't see the end. We should come back to the mankind. The mankind should be the center of gravity. For instance, some people prefer a strong family or a strong country. According to the new principle, a strong family or country will only make sense if it serves the basic right of the people in the family or in a country. This leads to the second and third basic principles. The four original wills of the mankind are the leading for the state. The four social wills of the human society are the building elements of the state. These three basic principles should be the foundation of any state theory and any states. Under these three basic principles, there are some secondary principles in the, uh, in the state theory. For instance, the states should have basic public wills and the social public wills. The state is driven by its basic public wills. The operation of the state government is governed by the social public wills of the states. The social public wills of the states serves the basic public wills of the states. The discussions in the previous slides can be illustrated by a simple chart here. The public wills of the states consist of two parts. In the left branch, the basic public wills of the states equals to the original wills of all individuals in the state. We should also keep in mind that the original wills of the individuals equals to the original wills of the mankind. This means that the basic public wills of the states is universal. The basic public rights of the states is governed by the basic public wills of the states. It consists of the basic public freedom and the basic public interest. In the right branch, the social public wills of the states 
is a collection of many things. I will explain this in next two slides. In short, it contains a proper selection of the social wills for the states. It contains also some constraints to the social wills of all individuals in the state. It describes also how to deal with the wills of group disasters of the individuals in the states and the will interactions with other states and the environment. A unique property of the social public wills of the states is that it represents the sovereignty of the states, both inside the states and outside the states. This is because it sets the constraints for the behaviors of all the individuals in the states and it deals with all the external interactions. I would like to emphasize that the social public wills serves the basic public wills. We have already discussed this in the previous slides. Since the social public wills sets a framework for the social public rights of the state's government, a proper definition of the social public wills is crucial for the states. We could see from the history that the failure of the government in some countries are due to the lack of proper social public wills. The social public wills of the states consist of social public freedom and social public interest. You could see on the drawing that social public rights serves the basic public right of the states. It means that the social public rights should protect the, the basic rights of all individuals in the states. As I explained in previous slides, a proper definition of the social public wealth is crucial for the states. This slide is a list of the social public wills of the states. It consists of several elements. First, a proper selection of the social wills for the states. In part two of this video series, I have shared with you some highlights on such a selection. I would like to repeat the result here. They are exclusion of the hatred feature of the will of virtual individual happiness, proper usage of the satisfaction and responsive features of the will of virtual individual happiness, proper usage of the owner feature of the will of virtual individual efficiency, limited usage of the selfish feature of the will of virtual individual efficiency, limited usage of the enhanced order and enhanced group interaction features of the social will of group efficiency. As I explained in part two of this video series, the original will of the individual efficiency needs to be excited. One of the key functions of the social public wills is to create a challenged and competitive social environment for the excitation of the original will of individual efficiency of all individuals in the states. The social public wills set constraints on the usage of the social wills by the individuals, especially by the social elite. 
It contains also interactions with the will of group disasters of all individuals. It contains also interactions with the social public wealth of other states and the wealth of the nature. The last includes proper utilization of natural resources and protection of the environment. I should emphasize that all elements of the social public wealth should be reflected in the social public freedom and the social public interest of the state. I have discussed this in details in my book. In the new state theory, there are two types of relations between the states and all individuals in the state. The first type is the basic relation. It sets the foundation for the relations between the individuals and the state. Second, the lawful relation. It sets the operational relation between the individuals and the state. Let me first explain the basic relation. The basic relation between the states and all individuals in the states contains some key elements. First, the basic public wealth of the states equals to the original wealth of all individuals of the states. Second, the basic public wealth of the states is universal and equals to the original wealth of the mankind. The consequences are that the basic public freedom of the states equals to the basic freedom of all individuals of the states. The basic public interest of the states is the sum of the basic interest of all individuals in the states. There is no ambiguity in a basic relation between the states and the individuals in the states. This is because the original wealth of the individuals is well defined. You could find the properties in my books. It means in practice that the original wealth of the individuals set a concrete and transparent references for the operation of the state. The individuals can use the reference to judge the performance of their states and state government. Now, the lawful relation. The lawful relation sets the operational relations between the individuals and the state. First of all, the social public wills serves the basic public wealth of the states. Second, the social public wealth of every state is unique. The social public wealth of the states represents the sovereignty of the states both inside the states and outside the states. The lawful relation between the states and all individuals in the states consists of three main parts. The most important one is that the social public will is above the social wills of all individuals of the state. As a consequence, the social public freedom is above the social freedom of all individuals of the state. The social public interest is not the sum of the social interest of all individuals in the state. Basically, it means that 
the state should put some constraints on the social behaviors of all individuals in the state. This is needed to prevent damages due to excessive usage of the social wealth by the individuals. Since the social public wealth of the states and the social wealth of the individuals are well defined, there's no big ambiguity in the lawful relation between the individuals and the states in the new state theory. This makes the lawful relation between the individuals and the states transparent and controllable. The social public wealth sets a reference for the operation of the state government. The individuals can use the reference to control the operation of the state government. The lawful relation between the states and all the individuals in the states sets also a reference for all the laws in the states. This joint summarizes the relations between all individuals in the states and the states. On top is the original wealth of all individuals in the states. It drives their basic freedom and the basic interest. The basic public wealth of the states equals to the original wealth of all individuals in the states. It defines the basic relation between all individuals and the state. The social public wealth of the states serves to the ba the basic public wealth of the states. It drives the social public freedom and the social public interest of the states. They are in turn above the social freedom and the social interest of all individuals in a state. It defines the lawful relation between all individuals and the state. In the bottom is the social wealth of all individuals in the state. It drives the social freedom and the social interest of all individuals. They are constrained by the social public freedom and social public interest from above. This drawing shows clearly the basic and lawful relations between all individuals and the state. With this remark, I would like to close part five of video series three. Thank you for your attention.